All right, everybody, I'm here with Brian and Kate Kirby. Uh, in my phone, there, our group chat is called BK Barbell. You'll understand why later. The topic is we live the outdoor hunting lifestyle and they are working on a project that matches functional fitness to the outdoor lifestyle. There's the extreme end. There's the guys like Cameron Haynes, and then there's the couch potatoes that don't do much, but uh, wish they could, or maybe gave up because things got too hard. We're here in Colorado, and the high country can be a really humbling experience, but there's all kinds of ways that you can benefit from it, and that's really the mission of Better Predator, is that it's gonna make you a more efficient hunter, it's gonna keep you in the field longer, but it's also gonna take out some of the suckage factor um, man, that your heart pounding in your head and all those things. Uh, so I kind of had this experience. I kind of dared myself to go, walk into a CrossFit gym seven, eight years ago. And I was training before that. I was doing sprint triathlons. I was running half marathons. I was doing stuff. I was, you know, going to the rec center and getting a pump, you know. But uh, it was pretty quick. I realized I had not really worked out to the um, lactic and aerobic threshold that actually moves the meter. Um, when I was guiding, uh, I, was, I was in my 20s and I was just kind of off of you know youth and vigor and did all those things, but I knew that there was something missing because I would have 70 year old clients from the East Coast that could still hike me into the ground. And I would try to play it off and it was, you know, I didn't eat good, you know, it was biscuits and gravy and chicken fried steak and, you know, just eating whatever I wanted because I thought I was getting so much exercise that I could burn it off. That first fall, after doing that training, I noticed a difference. And as the years progressed, um, it just keeps getting better and better and better. So they want to offer you some programming to get you um, to that uh, next level. So why don't you guys, we'll start with you, Brian. Tell us a little bit about your background and why anybody should give a crap what you have to say on this well, topic. <clears throat> I was in the military for 13 years. I've been hunting since I was knee high to a grasshopper. Um, I can't remember the first time that I went hunting, but I've been in the woods since before I could draw a bow back. Um, I always went out with my granddad and what have you. And then I spent 13 years in the army uh, had, I was injured in the army, that's why I didn't do a full 20, but I was a paratrooper and ranger qualified and I did programming and training for ranger students in the Mountain Phase Ranger School, which is in Dahlonega, Georgia. <clears throat> and then came here, back home, and been hunting in, in the woods ever since I got here and every chance I get we're in the mountains trying to either scout or hunt or just camp, regardless of what it is, we try and get outside. And the fitness portion really helps us continue on with what we do and what we love to do. Yeah, so we're sitting in their gym, Johnstown Strength, here in Johnstown, Colorado. So this is not a, a passing thing. This is not a weekend warrior thing. This is, uh, this is how Kate makes her living. Uh, this is how uh, you guys uh, take care of your family, and we're a tight bunch. Uh, this, this community uh, that we have here, and then we have like the subset of the subset of the community that kind of does this other thing with the lifestyle. So, what about you? Oh, I've been active my whole life. I did gymnastics for 10 years, and I coached it for another 10, um, started coaching fitness um, shortly after that while I was still coaching gymnastics I got into the CrossFit and met Dan through that and it was just fun it was competitive if it wanted it to be um, I've been a competitor my whole life um, slightly competitive just a little just a little, a little bit. competitive yes and so after I was done coaching gymnastics um, like I said I got into the fitness strength conditioning world and um, I've spent I don't know, the last five or six years doing that and learning from so many people and I've had great mentors and um, got into weightlifting specifically for, I think we've been doing that for three or four years. 
I've been um, doing it for a year and a half. Don't don't lump me into that because I've been you're doing saying it. my total is still more and than mine. And when they say weightlifting, so. they mean <laughs> actual competitive yes. Olympic weightlifting. Not bro lifts. Right. Not bro lifts. Not just gonna jerk the we Olympic lifts. <laughs> so the two Olympic lifts, educational point number one, Google it later if you don't believe yes. me, is is the snatch and the clean and jerk. Those are the only two Olympic uh, weightlifting events. Yes. So, like certifications and stuff. What do you guys hold right now? Um. Let's see. I've got USAW's sports performance and advanced sports performance um, certifications. I've got a kettlebell for strong certification. Um, and like I said, various workshops and learning. I'm constantly learning, constantly researching things and finding out what works. Mostly for my membership here, but also for everybody out there as well specifically geared toward hunters so awesome yeah well this is uh for a lot of people a pretty exciting time of year in colorado so we have the uh 2020 uh big game brochure come out and it is deadline hmm. deadline is <laughs> april 7th so you got between now and april 7th to uh, figure out what you want to hunt. And I just kind of had this thought of, um, does your fitness dictate what you're even going to apply for? Is there a hunt that you're a unit or something that you're not putting in for? Because really your fitness is the limiting factor. You know, one of the things that happened during some of the previous administrations that we can talk about, there's a big, a lot of topics about public land management and all that, but there was a lot of road closures. So even a lot of places that I hunted when I was in college here at Colorado State, you now have to put the boot leather in to get to. Um, they closed a lot of the Forest Service roads. Um, yep. A good and a bad thing. Now we have electronic bicycles and we have all these things and we're getting people more further back there. And it's not necessarily that we're saying that this program is only for that extreme athlete, but particularly Western big game hunting. Um, my dream for you is that you follow their programming and you kind of maybe fill out for a tag that you wouldn't normally do. Maybe you finally uh, draw that bighorn sheep tag or that mountain goat hunt or that super, you know, dream backcountry elk hunt. And then you have the fitness to, to be able to do that. So we're talking about this programming, and Kate, tell us a little bit about, uh, collectively between the two of you, what your approach is to this. There's so many different things. You know, you and I were talking the other day, and people, some are like, here's the first, you know, three weeks, and here's this, and here's that. And that's never, in here at least, that's never really been your approach. No, not really. Um, this is a lifestyle, like Dan said before. Um, I think that... Even if you're not a hunter, you should be working on your physical fitness just to live um, for your quality of life. But if you're going to do something more specific like this, then it's year round. I feel like there is no off season as far as being in shape or at least moving. Yeah, Brian and I were talking the other day and kind of exchanging little colloquialisms. And one of the ones that I said is like, we have this thing where we're like, oh, my hunt's in a month, I need to get in shape. Then you go on your hunt and it's a total suck fest. Mm -hmm. And then you say, I'm never doing this again. And then you come out of it and that should motivate you to train from that day forward. So the whole mantra there was, don't get ready, stay ready. Stay ready just, yeah. just all year. The work that, you know, we, the other thing we were talking about the other, the cold dark mornings now in the winter, mm -hmm. The cold, dark mornings in the fall, you're going to close that door on the truck real quiet. You're going to zip that pack down and you're going to be like, take a deep breath of mountain air and you're going to motor up that trail because you can. Yeah, the problem, the problem with I have to get into shape is you're, if you're out of shape and you're getting into shape, you have to break your body down before you can build it back up, right? Yeah. So <clears throat> if you break your body down right away and then you go into your hunt, 
you're already broken down, you haven't built anything up, and then you're going into the hunt, and you're breaking your body down more, so by the time you're done... And you're not sleeping you're not good, sleeping and you're not, good, eating, you're not good. eating good, you're not refueling your body getting, at all. There's bugs, then, you're pooping outside, there's all these other stressors. Yeah, it's terrible. And you then, missed a shot, and you're all jacked up mentally. Then by the time you're done, you're like, well, that was a miserable experience. I never want to do that again. And what our mindset is, is to let's have this be a year-round process rather than a six or 12 or 18 week programming that you can do. It's a month to month um, programming. Each month we have it all laid out. You get it all a month at a time and you just stay fit all year long. Now let's face it. Some of us, uh, we're going to enter into this and yeah, we need to get in shape first, but we're going to get in shape now, March, April, mm -hmm. June, yeah. uh, maybe into the summer, and then you're gonna start to see like what we would call gains, where it's just that strength and endurance is gonna continue to build. And we're, at, at least for this first cycle, we're gonna try to get you to peak in September, October, uh, and those type of things. So I know there's somebody out there um, just wondering if this is for them. Like, what kind of equipment do they need? What can they expect? Like, do they have to go buy a bunch of stuff? Do they have to join a fancy gym? Yeah. Um, well, yes and no. Um, our programming is weight-based. Lifting weights is going to get you strong, and we want to be strong very first. Um, you need muscular endurance. You need cardiovascular endurance. But if you're not strong, if you can't pick up your pack with... 80 pounds of raw meat in it, then I mean, what's really the point in the first place? Um, so yeah, access to a gym, access to a barbell with weights, you're gonna need things like that. If, and there's lots of ways to break this down. Yeah. You can join a gym, you can uh, go to garage gyms and get the uh, street parking workouts. And they call it that because people turn their garages into gyms and now yeah. their cars are parked out in the street. Yeah. So there's other ways to, to do it without uh, a gym membership yeah. and when we say gym membership we're not necessarily talking about 24-hour fitness just to make sure that that's, that's kind of yeah yes. <clears throat> it needs free weights yes <laughs> to, to be considered a, a gym in all honesty to 24-hour fitness I've never been in your store so I don't know what you guys have in there <laughs> there's it's a lot of purple no, no that's planet, that's planet, planet, planet fitness. fitness. There's a lot of fitnesses out there. So what about, um, talk a little bit about, we use the term scaling in the gym. Mm -hmm. So you may have something written on there and somebody may go, I can't do that. Sure. Like how do they figure out how to scale it to a point that they're, okay, all right, this is, this is feeling like something I can do. Absolutely. So a lot of typical CrossFit gyms, if you are unaware, have, um, their workouts written and then they that you know as it's written as prescribed is what the typical or average I guess athlete would do but not everybody is even there so we have you know different levels um, with our better predator it's as it's written is the set it's set up how the workout is and then we've got s2 which is a little bit easier it's modified you can scale it and then we've even got an s3 which is even more scalable and even more modified. So it really And is. if you got to start at S3, like everybody that yeah. comes in here, if you walk in off the street, you're an S4.5. <laughs> <laughs> like it's just the truth. Yes. Um, yeah. And I can tell you, no offense to any other coaches I've ever had, the RX and RX level here, the S and S plus level here is harder than where I was before. Mm -hmm. And I found myself in my parking lot, in the parking lot, questioning my life choices. <laughs> and uh, I almost ran back home to mom. Um, so that's, that's something to consider. Uh, there is this, like, what's your philosophy on, is it like, no pain, no gain, you know, you ain't bleeding, you ain't trying. Like, what's, what's the overall attitude of the, of the coaches? Well, she's a little bit, she's a little bit nicer he than He was an I instructor am. at Ranger School, so yeah, com yeah. compassion's probably not his strong yeah, no, I, uh, I try real hard to tone down my uh, abrasive and aggressiveness when I'm in here in the gym. <clears throat> Sometimes it comes out 
but it's usually coming out from a place of love for my members here so I don't Absolutely. so I, so that they can continue to get strong or what have you but she's way more lenient on say uh, depth of a squat <laughs> or yeah. that has not been my experience at all <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I will sit right next to somebody and be like hey you need to go lower right that, that so doesn't, that so doesn't count to, <laughs> so to that um, <clears throat> if you are getting into better predator for hunting chances are you don't really need a full depth squat mm. close to a full depth squat so we can build up those muscles accordingly absolutely that's fair absolutely well let's talk about that because that really comes to this point of functional fitness mm -hmm. in brian's previous career he had a very specific thing that he was training people for yeah. and it was not to be on the firefighter calendar this is <laughs> well, not vanity fitness yeah, this we're not is, bodybuilders. This, we're not. We're not. Yeah, here. and so when he's training warriors that are going to uh, do the thing that keeps you up at night, there is a very specific methodology to how they train them, both physically and uh, psychologically. That's the same approach here. It's a very specific thing that we're trying to do, right. and again, it's not. It's not a vanity thing. And I, I, if you're scrolling through this video and you get to this part and you're just trying to work on your buys and tries and you're trying to get in bikini shape, or whatever your goal is, just keep scrolling because these ain't <laughs> the people for you. But if you want to be a beast, if you want to get in the mountains and just feel amazing for maybe the first time in your life, then, then give this a try. Anything else on programming? Yeah, I, think, I think that's about it. So Better Predator, who's it for? Is it for the backcountry hardcore bow hunter? I think we can check that box. Yep. <laughs> is it for, I don't know, the lazy person who's a rifle hunter like me? I haven't bow hunted in a really long time. Yeah, I think still so. Gonna help you. It's still gonna help me because I actually am probably carrying a little more weight while I'm out in the field during the day. And when I crest that hill and I need to make that shot and my heart's going <gasps> Because I just hiked over that hill, I my recovery time is going to be so much faster because I've been training with you guys. And in order to be a precision shooter, there is a fitness aspect to that. Even if it's just me holding my breath at the bottom of my breath before I touch my shot. Right. Yeah. Um, upland so hunters, you you we got Bear in here with us tonight. Uh, try keeping up with him. And you may think that's funny, but we do hunt birds with him. Yeah. Um, you chasing a German short hair all day? Uh, that's a lot, uh, particularly on the hips. Walking through a lot of a lot of grass and stuff, it's really grass that. I stocks. mean, we. Uh, I will give you a, a testimony of trying to keep up with a miniature dachshund in the mountains of Japan, and Brett is about this tall, and that dog hiked me into the <laughs> ground. Those little legs, and it doesn't even look like he's trying. Oh. And after the end of the day, I'm looking at Eric like, how is this possible? <laughs> that dog is amazing. Waterfowl hunters, I saw you do a, a post on that. Talk yeah, about that a little bit. Um, <clears throat> if you're sitting there and you got a lot of geese flying or ducks or whatever, and they're circling you and circling you for about five or 10 minutes straight, and you're sitting there hammering on your call, it takes a lot of breath. It's kind of surprising how it does. out of like how winded you get just by blowing into that dang call so much. It's it's when I was a goose amazing. guy, I always had chapped lips and a sore throat. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, you pretty much hyperventilate for a living is, yeah. is what you do. Yeah, I'll sit I'll sit in the blind and I'll have to take my coat off and because I'm just Working yeah, up and if you're, if you're, on a call, it's pretty you know, sad. We, we got the, we got the big pack here and, uh, Kate talked about it. Eric runs his at about 50 pounds. If we're going to be a couple of days, um, up to 70 pounds. My pack and was 70 pounds last. 75 last pounds. Season. 75? 75 pounds. And that's a lot of weight. But if you are slugging through the slop mm -hmm. with just even a couple dozen decoys on your back. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. the same thing. Yep. And you can say what you want about waterfowl hunting, that it's less extreme, 
But you go out there and it, after sitting there all day and then go out there and have to pick up decoys and then pound them all the way back to the truck. You try crossing and, a river and waders while the yeah. river's flowing fast and yeah. you're yeah. sitting there trying to step on rocks and hold yourself up along with your when I, when decoys. I, when uh, Dave and Tim and John and I went on our caribou hunt, I shot my caribou and I did the one thing we all agreed we weren't going to do. And I shot it on the other side of the river. And oh, so I had to no. ford the river. Now, did I get pretty cool pictures of me with caribou antlers on my back and my pack crossing the river? And did maybe I go a little slow to make sure we <laughs> captured that moment? Because that's what you all dream about, right? Yeah, yeah. And But to have the fitness to, to do that and to walk around on the tundra, which is this super uneasy thing. It's like, it's pretty much one, two, fall, one, two, fall, one, two, my foot is stuck. I may never get it back out. And it's just... Like to go a hundred yards is ridiculous. Last year I had to cross the Colorado River down by Colorado Springs. I had decoys on my back, gun in my hand, and my son on my shoulder. And I was crossing the Colorado River and it was sketchy as all get out. I was so worried I was gonna slip and drop my son. Yeah. But I'm, I made it across, no problem. So. <laughs> so maybe we're not teaching you how to pull a man out of a burning tank. But it's still mission oriented, functional fitness. And again, it's not uh, vanity. Whether you're a hardcore uh, backcountry hunter, a rifle hunter, an upland hunter, a wild, uh, wild bird hunter of any kind, waterfowl hunter, or maybe you're a bargain hunter and you just want to shop until you drop a little better. <laughs> On Black Friday, when you take grandma out for the super good deals, we either way, <laughs> either way, they can, they can help you with that. Um, the programming is going to start and the sooner you adapt to it and just do it and it's going to take you a while to to figure stuff out and to learn some of the terminology and all of that the weird and, terminology all has should have videos attached to oh, it yeah. and there's a place where you can get a hold of us if you got questions or anything um, it everything is going to be laid out nice and easy for you videos, descriptions, anything that you could think of is all going to be right there for at your fingertips. And it's there's it's highly documented stuff. If you want to just work on technique and you put the name of the technique in there, get a bowl of popcorn cuz it's going to take you forever to watch all the videos. I I still do it. If yeah. there's something coming up that I'm not super confident in, I will just to try to get the visual reps before I even walk through the door. I'll watch a video or two and we all have our favorite athletes we all have our people that we yeah. that we like to like to watch or or want to want to emulate brian kirby if people want to learn more about you or follow you on social media how do they get a hold of you i'm at curb street 51 on instagram and then just my name on facebook and i'll pop up somewhere you can tell me about the big red beard Yep, and then there's Better Predator. There's Better Predator. We also have BK Barbell, which is our weightlifting team that we're trying to incorporate into the gym. And then the rest is yours. Yes. All right, Kate. How do we <laughs> how do we find you out on the socials? Um, Facebook is just my name, Kate Kirby. My Instagram has two underscores. It's Kate underscore underscore Kirby. Um, and yeah, BK Barbell, we do that one together. Johnstown Strength, I think it's Johnstown.strength on Instagram, um, and Facebook as well. And there's a, there's a great lot of supporting content on yeah. there too. Yeah. And if you want to learn more about our community here, or if you find yourself in Northern Colorado and want to drop in for a workout, please do. Um, please do. We'd, we'd love to have you. I'm Dan Reeves, and if you want to follow me, it's very cryptic. Dan Reeves, R-I-E, V as in Victor, E-S, on the Book of Faces, uh, LinkedIn, I'm on all the things. Uh, all and the then you can you can follow uh, our uh, filming that we do for Boken Adventure at BokenAdventure.com. we got links to all of our social on there. That's B-O-K-E-N. It's like broken with the out the R adventure.com and it's a filming project in North America and Japan and sometimes Europe or wherever Eric ends up being and he has a camera following him around so we're on Instagram we're on Facebook we're on YouTube and uh, this is a collaborative effort to bring you great content to make you a uh, 